Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week, we're going to be taking a quick look at one of my favorite mechanics to implement in the game design, Dexterity, because there are just so many different options available to it. So let's jump on over to the table next door and see what we have in store. For a lot of people, Dexterity kind of draws to mind immediately disc flicking. And they're not wrong. Some of the most popular dexterity games like Flick 'em Up and Catacombs use discs as the main dexterity element. In this case, Catacombs Conquest, which is a more portable version of the larger Catacombs campaign, takes place with both discs and a card action system. In this game, you're trying to eliminate the other team's health to zero. The rules state that you can start the game with eight, but can also adjust based on how long you'd like to play. And the idea is that you'll be flicking discs to attack each other on this battlefield of obstacles as well as your characters. To start the game, each player will have four action cards, and on their turn, they will play one of them, resolving all the different actions on that card. So in the case of Ellere, the Amethyst Knight, you would move twice and then use an attack disc to do damage. So let's go ahead and show what that might look like. In the rules, they recommend maybe using your fingertip, one, two, to move, and then placing this bad boy right next door and using it to attack. Awesome, so because there's the red sticker there, that would have done two damage, taken away two health points from the skull team. Now, if there were, for instance, this disc to fly off the battlefield, we just place it about where it left the board. And then, to finish off the turn, the active player would be able to move defensively or offensively an obstacle to set up the next turn. Ooh, and we should also move that attack disc, so that would have been a little bit washed out. Let's go ahead and redo that here. Awesome. So that would have blocked maybe the range of fire, line of sight, uh, for the next player, but they'll counter back and play their own card, which allows them to move once and then also attack with that large disc. So it might look something like this. Oh! There, that's better. I'm gonna go ahead and say that was a uh, misfire. But essentially we'll go back and forth as an elimination game in Catacombs Conquest to get the general idea again of the much larger or big brother game, Catacombs. With all sorts of other action cards too to play, you'll have to hedge your bets about not only how to position yourself onto the board, but also test out your dexterous skills and see if you're going to be able to pull something off. Now, Catacombs Conquest also breaks down into a nice team variant as well, so you could have a partner on your team to help out if maybe you're a little bit less skilled. And that's sort of one of the pitfalls of dexterity games in that if you maybe are not particularly dexterous, then you might have less fun playing, which is why the genre is normally lighthearted and quicker in terms of game length. I wanted to kick things off with Catacombs Conquest because there is a little bit of strategy involved as opposed to maybe the next entry, which is geared towards a much younger audience. Dr. Eureka is a simultaneous dexterity game in which players will be trying to complete scientific formulas with the test tubes in front of them. These are molecules that you'll be trying to sequence out given whatever card is laid out for the entire table to race towards. Unlike Catacombs Conquest, there are no turns and things are gonna be pretty loud and hectic using just your hands. So let's try and see what happens. Trying to get this sequence to match, we're gonna pour our test tube balls thusly. Oh, that's not good, but maybe we can Make that work out okay if we can just do something like this. Oh, almost there. Come on. And then uh, we need this last one here. Did I get that order right? No, I didn't. So let's get this one over here like this. And we need one purple. Okay. And one purple is left. And we need this over here. Oh, it's too many. Just trying to get everything on camera, but also make sure that the balls, the molecules don't go rolling around the table. Okay, yes, looks good. Now, the great thing about whew, Dr. Eureka is that you can also use your test tubes upside down to complete the formula. Ah! And you're supposed to use only just the test tubes themselves, not even your fingers. Whew, so it gets a little bit riskier. Wow! But if we managed to get this before anyone else, we would claim this as a victory point for ourselves and go on to the next round. 
the first player to gain five is the winner, or is maybe crowned Dr. Eureka at the science convention. Ages eight and up for one to four players, Dr. Eureka aims probably, yeah, to a different demographic, but still using your active body in ways that people don't normally maybe in other crunchier board games. And to start the next round of play, we just pick up immediately from where we've left off, and hopefully that's going to get us into a decent position for the next one. Oh, but maybe not. Let's see. Okay, so this looks good. This can stay, and we just need to get... Another popular type of dexterity is balance, and what we're going to see right now is quite the test of it. In Gravity Warfare, we're going to try to place all of our pieces onto a space station, these six here, without getting it to tip over or just trying to outlast any of the other players. We're going to roll these two dice here to determine what piece we're going to place onto the station. Ooh, that's more like it. As well as what area. And where is the space station? I'm glad you asked. Kachunk. It's not even going to fit in the screen here, but it is the self balancing board. And we have different areas devoted to each of those colors that are present on the dice. So it sounds pretty easy. All we need to do is match up this piece onto the yellow area. But as a take that dexterity game, we have to also not only make sure that the board doesn't fall over after we've placed our piece onto it, but every player around the table also has the opportunity to play a take that card. So in the case here, someone could play this challenge where you have to play two pieces like a totem, one on top of the other at the same time, which is gonna make things a little bit hairier when it comes to trying to ensure the board doesn't tip over. As you saw, there was some kinetic elements to the game as well, and there is a specific card that forces you to spin the board before you place, which gets even crazier. So let's see, I'm gonna try to just drop it right here in the center and hope that works. Okay, so that was a successful turn, holy cow. It's still turning, it's still moving. We would then move on to the next player. And again, we're just trying to basically outlast everyone else. Oh, it is teetering like crazy over here. And there's just so much excitement going on with this dexterity game. There are a couple other things like asymmetric player abilities and other cards that even, for instance, force you to use chopsticks to place your pieces onto the board but it's a whole lot of fun we can either play up to 20 points where every round that you can finish placing all your pieces nets you five or you can play simply three rounds to just get things going there's another dexterity game called bumbolio that this one seems to take quite a bit of inspiration from but i definitely can say i really appreciate the sci-fi skin on this one so again, dexterity isn't limited to only using components, but also maybe a marriage of other skills or forces, in this case, gravity, to your advantage in the design. And here's one of my own designs, a current one called Flip Frogs. The idea here is that you want to land your frogs onto these lily pads and collect the different resources so that you can cash them in for crowns and become royalty of the pond. Now, it's called Flip Frogs for a reason, because instead of just dropping the cards onto the lily pads, we're actually going to use the frog cards to flip ourselves onto the lily pads themselves. This is that extra dexterity element for maybe a recipe building game. And so we will be able to collect all the resources, the rule state, that are on the lily pad, as well as on the frog itself. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up two fireflies, or lightning bugs rather, a dragonfly, and a lily. So, let's see, was that enough to cash in for a crown? And the answer is yes. We'll go ahead and spend one lightning bug and one dragonfly to score this on the score track, as well as gain a free firefly, lightning bug, or slug. And let's go with the slug so that maybe we can actually complete a new recipe. This top one is going to flip over and be placed on the bottom of the pile for something new. And in this case here, we have a couple other ingredients that are gonna open up, or I should say be required for the next goal. We're gonna keep taking turns like this until we have both of our frogs out on the table, 
at which point we'll also be using the other lily pads that we started the game with, that is to say three that were dealt to us, to also flip the frogs for future turns and then place out onto the table. Once all lily pads have been out onto the board, we'll flip them over for the fall side and once we go through all the falls, we'll begin removing them for the winter to thus end the game and whoever is the farthest along who has the most crowns is crowned the winner. I really enjoy innovative uses or somewhat different uses for standard components that hopefully people find interesting and that aren't something that you would normally expect. So again, for instance, cards, as we've discussed in the component close-up, normally convey information, which these do, but also using them as a piece in the game, I think is something that a lot of people seem to like. And with a cute enough theme, I've been getting away with it so far. So I think one strength in this modern board game industry is again, with each of these dexterity games, that it wasn't the sole mechanic and that actually each one sort of combined it with a different other mechanic to make something totally new and fresh. With this new year, I'm really excited to see what else comes out on the market in the realm of dexterity, especially after other classics like Rhino Hero, Drop It, and Ice Cool. Honestly, this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to dexterity games and all the different types of dexterity that there are. So maybe there'll be a part two once I add a few more of those into my collection. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on future content like this. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint. And together, let's build something great. Ah! Oh no! I'm no doctor. Huh. <sighs>